Hey guys, what's happening? Neil back once again with another quick streaming review for you. And today I'm going to be taking a look at Stargirl Season 2 on Prime Video, which I believe is the only way to watch it up here in Ontario, Canada. Couldn't find it on cable like I could Season 1, so... Eh, it's a little bit disappointing, but that's okay. You know, I can watch it on Prime Video, so why not? And guess what, guys? Season 2 is even better than Season 1. I'm so... So happy with this show. Everyone does such a great job. It's more than it seems, though. I gotta say, it's not just, you know, about these high school students. It's also about respecting comic book history, you know, the Justice Society of America, the JSA, and the fact that in Season 2 we finally get to see Wildcat, and we get John Wesley Ship back as the Flash. We get a little bit of Starman, of course, and we also get uh, Thunderbolt, and Our Man, which are all featured in flashbacks, which, oh man, it's such a treat for anyone that loves DC Comics and the history of DC Comics going way back to the 40s. Uh, although, of course, in this show, it's not set that far back, uh, naturally. So, uh, in Season 2, I mean, the main story here is that it's really all about Eclipso, who's the main bad guy here, uh, who gets away from Cindy, who thought that she could control Eclipso, but doesn't realize that Eclipso is this incredibly powerful demon, this evil entity that can possess, you know, someone, and uh, can also create illusions and really mess with people's heads, you know, pretend to be loved ones and say, oh, I'm disappointed in you and things like that. So it's, it's really, really kind of creepy. And I really love the design of Eclipso. They do a great job of adapting the look of the character from the comics. I thought, you know, Eclipso goes way back, but in terms of a, a really, you know, being a really dangerous, dangerous character, uh, I think a lot of people remember what happened uh, during the Day of Vengeance comic storyline with Jean Loring, who was the uh, ex-wife of the Adam, I believe, and then you know, she killed Sue Dibney. It's this whole thing. You gotta, you know, you gotta look into it, but uh, <laughs> look it up on Wikipedia, uh, or better yet, buy the comic, and uh, check it out, because it's pretty fantastic. Uh, identity Crisis leading into Day of Vengeance, which, uh, you know, was all about how Eclipso possessed Gene Loring. So, anyway, on the show, though, the possessions are well, they're kind of few and far between. I mean, he's kind of his own thing now. He doesn't really have to possess anybody or anything, necessarily, uh, but he does. And that's obviously big consequences for everyone, right? I mean, <laughs> he possesses some of the more powerful characters. That's That's a that's a big problem, uh, but, you know, I was really, really happy with the addition of Jade, who's Green Lantern's daughter. Uh, she's in the first episode of season two, like, right away, and I thought that was a great way to start the season off with a bang. Uh, she's it's a little slow, you know, getting there, but once, you know, she fights Eclipso, then I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, just because I, I know these stories so well, and it's so cool to see a Green Lantern-like character, in this case, the daughter of the original Green Lantern, uh, taking on uh, Eclipso, you know, such a powerful demon. And, uh, you know, bad things happen. Um, characters die, or at least we think they die. You know, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to really spoil the show here, uh, but there are some, some nail-biting moments where you're not sure if characters are, are dead or not. So, yeah. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. The only disappointment, the only criticism I'm going to really give it uh, is just Solomon Grundy. You know, his face wasn't that great. I thought it was just a little bit kind of claymation kind of looking, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so the CGI wasn't wasn't all that, you know, that it could have been, I suppose. But otherwise, you know, uh, you know, it's a great show. That's a very minor misgiving about a wonderful show with uh, many new uh, characters that were, you know, kind of barely introduced at the end of season one there, such as The Shade. He's another classic character, and uh, he's done really well here as well. We don't know whether or not he's a you know, a villain or a, you know, a, a decent fellow, and, you know, do you trust him? Of course not, but, uh, but, you know, hey, uh, <laughs> he's, a, he's a great addition to the lineup. So, yeah, great season. I'm going to give Stargirl Season 2 a 9 out of 10. Definitely check out this show on Prime Video if you haven't already. I believe you can still watch it from the beginning of Season 1, uh, so you can get all caught up there, and uh, certainly check out Jeff John's take on Stargirl, 
and the JSA comics from about the mid-2000s. I definitely recommend those too, because why the heck not? So, thanks guys for checking out this quick streaming review of Stargirl Season 2. This is Neil. Peace.